I accidentally deleted everything for this week's vlog, so... Whoops. I mean, I guess I do still have, like, one thing. I'll insert that in just a minute. No, I don't know what I did. I mean, I deleted everything, so I do know what I did. So here's what I think we're gonna do this week. Not that I don't normally plan out a vlog, because that's, that's not vlog. Last week in the vlog, I picked up some neem oil because there are some white fly issues going on out here. And I got... <laughs> oh, we're off to a great start. So I grabbed the bonite. Normally, I really like bonite. Bonite, how do, how do you guys say it? But let me show you the problem here is that it is very viscous. Very, very runny. It, it's good. Like, I don't hate it. But it just doesn't stick. Do you see how quickly... It comes and runs off the foliage, which, you know, that's not a terrible thing, but I like using... Hold, okay, hold on. Okay, so the garden safe, that's the other one. This one is more sticky and more tacky, at least this batch was, and the thing I liked about that was that it kind of sticks to the foliage. The foliage stays wet a little bit longer, because when you're spraying for white fly, they, like, flutter away. They fly away. So it needs to stay wet for a little bit longer so that when they come back and land on it, it'll take care of them. So that was just a really long explanation of me saying I need to go buy some fun, well not fun, neem oil, which is a fungicide. But I want to get this garden safe one so we can go do that together. I'll vlog that. Uh, but first, the one thing I do have, like the only few clips I have were from a nursery I went to and I kind of looked at some of their evergreens. So just go ahead and watch that real quick. It's not going to tie into anything, but here's that. Look at the bark on this Japanese maple. Isn't that gorgeous? Come in here on that tag for you. By how? Japanese maple. Zone 6. It, that is stunning. Absolutely beautiful. This umbrella pine is adorable. What variety are you? Joe Kose. Japanese umbrella pine. I love those. Oh, excuse me, where are you going? Yeah, I didn't transition. I stopped by a nursery. Now, obviously, I'm not at the park anymore, climbing around on rocks. Really liking these abelias, too. I was thinking about maybe using some abelias in the landscape this year. Proven Winners has one, and uh, it looks pretty cool. So, might give these a shot. Not these guys. I want to look into them a little bit more. Do a little bit more research on what variety I want. But I really like abelias. They have so much color on their foliage. Um, okay. You know, some people are into the graphs. Nothing wrong with that. It looks cool. Those guys over there, that might be a bit much for me, though. <laughs> I don't I don't know. Okay, they're, like, out of nowhere growing on me. That didn't take long. You gotta love the new and unusual, right? Oh. This particular nursery I'm at right now always has an amazing selection of evergreens. They get them in from Oregon. Oh, they're just beautiful. An amazing selection. Pretty sure it's Oregon. Somewhere up there in the northwest where they just grow these things so beautifully. This guy. Bushes lace. It's really pretty. Very pretty. Look at how cool the foliage is on this guy. It has like three different colors to it. Greens and yellows and blues. This is the, what does that say? Cheyenne Japanese white pine. Gorgeous. Two by two and a half feet. Oh, it's so neat. Look at that. Let's see here. You are Sedera Sapphire Nymph, two gallon. That is so nice. It has the perfect shape to get started with a bonsai on. It looks so cool. One thing I know for sure this year in my garden is I need to up my evergreen game. I gotta step it up because in the winter times, everything's just, it's just mulch. I hate it. I just really need to bring in some shrubs so that there's more color in the garden during the winter time. I don't think I'm just gonna be planting random conifers, but some type of shrubbery. I have also been thinking about maybe getting some more mollies to put in here into the pool pond because they're really good mosquito eaters, mosquito larvae eaters. I have mosquito fish. They're tiny, really tiny. It's just little live bear minnows. They do a great job. The problem is that I this all gets moved outside when it gets warmer and uh, I don't have great luck with mosquito fish. The birds seem to pick them off very quickly, whereas the mollies are a little bit more resilient, not as cold tolerant as the mosquito fish, but they still, they work fairly well. Uh, I mean, great, actually, not fairly well. They're excellent at eating insect larvae. So I'm thinking about maybe running by the pet store and grabbing a few more of those too, if they have them. So let's go. Am I going to go to Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot? I don't know. This one always makes me feel so guilty when I leave. I gotta go. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, pumpkin. I know you need so much love and attention. You good girl. Yes, you are. Okay. 
like she hears my car keys and then she just gives me the sad face and comes running up to me and she's like, you're not leaving me, are you? I'm so sorry, but it's okay. I won't be gone long. Yeah, you're such a sweetheart. <laughs> my dogs, they couldn't care any less. Yep, I'm sorry. Go ahead, make me feel guilty. I'll be back, though. Love you, pumpkin. What? Uh, do you see this? What are you doing? You stretching out? You're dragging this on. Everybody's going to get so upset. They're going to be like, excuse me, I thought you were going to go run errands, and instead we're just staring at your cat? Well, what am I supposed to do? I mean, other than, like, not film every ridiculous thing that's happening. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. Okay, and scared off by the ice maker. I'm going to go. Love you, pumpkin. Okay, it is really, really crowded here. So many fun, colorful spring things. Nice golden sword yucca. It's a filamentosa. After I did that video with the rostrata, my yucca rostrata, there were people talking about not being able to grow yuccas where they live, but this is one, the filamentosa, good all the way down to zone four. They don't get a big trunk on them, but they're still really pretty. It'll, this will be prettier when temperatures warm up. It'll look a lot better. I did not know that the correct name for sweet mint was yerba buena. I like that. That makes me like it even more. I always like things that roll off the tongue easily and have a fun tone to them. Nice cadence. Oh my goodness. These petunias smell phenomenal. That is a smell I absolutely love. I don't think it's time for petunias yet, though. Oh, but they smell so good. I've noticed, I even remember this from when I was a child, I don't know how the color's playing through on camera, but these like very light pink to lavender colored petunias always seem to smell wonderful. It's like one of my first petunia memories was planting these. These look very pink on my screen, but they're like a light, very light purple. Oh, they smell so good. Oh my, <laughs> okay, wrong direction, what happened? Holy freaking ferns. I think these are macho ferns. They always, well, they didn't last year, but the year before they got these in and they were just as big. Are they machos? Macho fern. Why, why do I not have a cart? What's wrong with me? Right, so the person who runs the guarding department, guarding, guarding department, and does the ordering just inform me that they have monsteras in here, which I don't need, but I might get one. Oh, they're so cute. 15 bucks, not a, <laughs> not a splitly philodendron. Definitely got that tag wrong. Oh, which one should I get? I don't need this, but I want it. Cause I only add my Thai constellation. I don't have any of the regular normal Monsteras. Oh honey, you got pinched. What happened to you? Digging through, trying to find something that's really full on the bottom. It's a nice firm pot. Checking the undersides of the foliage, make sure there's no bugs on them. There we are. I think this is the one. The Pot's nice and solid, so it's rooted in there somewhat well. Foliage is a little dusty, but that's all right. It's got a lot of action going on down below. Yeah. One yellow leaf. Not that big a deal. Yeah, this, this is the one. Oh, they've got some nice Senecios, and they got one of the Rodianias over here. A string of pearls. Look nice. Which cinnamon geum is this? Very illusion. Have that one. Mm, I've got some nice fruit at Casas, too. I like these. I'm being quiet because I'm surrounded by people and I don't normally vlog when there's people watching. <laughs> Almost forgot why I was here. <laughs> Needed to get some neem. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I do have some of uh, the bare systemic. That does work really well for white flies, so I'll try and use some of that too when I get home. Mm, maybe. I might try spraying for a little bit longer because the problem with the um, bare systemic is that it smells horrible. Like, every time I put that down, I avoid my grow space for like a couple days because it's so stinky. I can't remember, why am I here? Oh, um, I tried to order some traps for stink bugs and the order got canceled, like the vendor couldn't fulfill it. So I'm wondering if maybe they might have those here, but I'm not seeing it. Okay, I can't say much because the music in here is really loud. Maybe if I speak in chunks, then it'll be okay. It's, oh, this is just cute, that's what I was gonna say. I like this. I immediately want to put a vine in it and let it just kind of grow out the sides. Look at how stunning this is. I hear from you guys that I have a nice Lowe's. That, okay. It seems like a lot of money for a Pyrus, but it's beautiful. Uh, I don't think you even saw the price. 60, <laughs> there we go, $64. Oh my goodness. And these foxtail ferns are gigantic. 
You see that? Look at how beautiful those are. I need to take a picture of this or just psh, screenshot. Done. These Kimberly Queen ferns are like just monster. Oh, how cute. Little yellow begonias. <laughs> Literally just says yellow begonia. Okay. All right, Monrovia, getting a little bit lazy. Who else, when you're shopping for plants, goes digging through the pile? Make sure you go through it and find just, like, the one that has, like, two or three plants in it. I always do that. Sometimes I spend way too much time doing that. Oh, and some of these got some roots on them. Look at those roots. I like seeing that. I like seeing that a lot. These are the Francine. Let me show you. Come on. Like I've never vlogged before. Francie plantain lily. I like the white edges on them. I have a planter I'm going to do. I think these will work nicely in, and they're only three ninety eight. I mean, they're tiny, but still. And look at this one. This is mixed in the bunch. Says it's a Francie, just like the other ones. Francie can't say that. The variations all cool though. I don't know if that's going to hold, but if it does, that would be awesome because that's just gorgeous. Oh, more begonias. It is. I don't know what they're going to do. It's supposed to be twenty nine tomorrow night, so that's. It could be problematic for a lot of these guys. Mm-hmm. Yep, there we go. Always prepared. Guys, I feel like such a psycho walking around talking to myself, but it's worth it. I love these hookerellas. They are so pretty. They're like lum luminescent. Sorry, there's a lot of noise in the back. These syzygiums, I always say that wrong, but that's that's what they're called, right? Yeah. Yeah, syzygium paniculatum globulus. These are beautiful. And look at that price. That's fantastic. Look at it. See, look at how big they are for $42.99. That's awesome. But not a perennial here. I think they're a zone eight, so that's not gonna work for me. Gosh, these Kimberly Queen ferns. Okay, so those hanging basket macho ferns were somewhere $25.99, somewhere $34 or $99 or $98, something like that. But if you just get a gigantic one that's not in a basket, it is, okay, that would be more fun if the reveal was nice. $14.98. Can I get one? Can I get three? Oh, but if you want them in a prettier plastic pot, it's going to cost you a couple more dollars. These are adorable. Euonymus, I guess that's Euonymus japonicus micro mooncliff. Moncliff. Moncliff. Look at that. Two by two. Oh, That's so little and tiny. My issue with variegated Euonymus is the variegation is so uneven and it doesn't always hold. Like, I mean, you can kind of see that in here, right? Some of them great, some of them not so much. But these would be adorable for like a little miniature garden type thing. They'd be really cute. This beeping has been going on forever and it's driving me nuts. Mm. Want to check out the new pottery? It's more difficult to do that with Lowe's than Walmart because they sell some multiple years in a row and some of it's new. But I know this. I haven't seen this one before. That's really pretty. 20 inch artichoke cream. That sounds gross. But it looks beautiful. Oh, and I like this garland urn, the faux concrete. I will say though, you, that needs to come down like five dollars, forty-four ninety-eight. That would sell much better. Just my opinion. It's a little pricey. It is really nice though. It's got a lot of detail in it. Good height, drainage hole. I'm just really cheap. That's all. You like the sandstone ones? Much better price point. Also, much more plasticky. Oh, they look like they're, like, made out of sand, though. Like, it's like a sandcastle pot. Now they've grown on me. They have some nice shallow bowls. This acanthus looks nice. Got these, like, twisted grass weave planters and the rope ones. That is a very reasonable price. This is a nice-looking pot. 23-inch Tobago. I like that. No hole. So you have to drain it yourself, but it's a nice big pot. It looks nice. Okay, there's just like rack upon rack upon rack of plants. I'm, there's no one to be able to show everything. Those are kind of cute though. I really don't need more ferns. I already have a Kimberly Queen fern, but these are just, they're so big. Just look at that. $14.98. My cart's full, so exercising restraint slash just don't have the option. Oh no, am I going to have to switch to a flatbed? What do you guys think they named these begonias? <laughs> Take a wild guess. Orange begonia, so creative. <laughs> Peeling back the plastic, creeping in on all these plants. Those osteospermums, beautiful. Oh, these are really cute assorted hanging baskets. Like they actually have a weave on them, like a basket. That's adorable. Whole bunch of cheap dusty millers down here. And then up here, some nice pink begonias, and we keep on going. Looking at some marigolds, petunias, petunias, petunias. Oh my god. 
died. There's a lot of ferns. I'm not sure what these are. Are these Mark Wahlbergs? Yeah, I think so. Kimberly Queen has a more stiff, darker, glossy frond to it. Those look like Boston ferns. Oh, look at these beautiful white drift roses. You guys, by the way, the background noise, I'm so sorry. Like, I don't think I've ever been driven this crazy before while I've been out here between the yelling people and the beeping and then just constant trucks. It's no one's fault. It's just annoying when I'm trying to talk to y'all. That's all. I think it's okay, though. I've got what I needed and then some, so go ahead and take off. Oh, but first, look at these. Would you focus, please? Come on. There we go. Those so pretty. You might want to see the actual plants, huh? Beautiful. Oh, I love these. They have a nice silvery foliage on them and that pretty purple flower. Those are cool. Okay, hold on. Look at that. These colors are so vibrant and like a perfect blend with the pink and the purple. And then they open up over here. Look at that to a nice purpley blue. Wow, I might have to get one of these. All right, I know, I said I was leaving. Last thing, I promise. Look at the forget-me-nots. They're so cute and cheerful. Very blue. I don't think that that's coming through on camera. They are like blue, blue, blue. Except for these little rebels tucked in there. The rest of them. Man, I wish that that looked as blue on camera as it does in person. Well, I, uh, I got my neem oil. And <laughs> yeah, yep, this is what happened. You guys know you were there. Do I need to do that as a haul when I get home? Like, go through everything specifically? I don't know if that'll be that exciting. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go home. I was gonna go by PetSmart and do the, you know, get those mollies, but really, I think I need to get back indoors. Back to my sacred place, back to home. Like, people are on something today. I have literally, just walking from the exit through there, I almost got hit by two cars. Like, I actually had to dodge two cars. People aren't being, like, rude, although I guess almost hitting a pedestrian, that's kind of rude. But people I've been interacting with, very friendly, which is nice. It's just there's a lot, just a lot happening. Too much stimulation. And it's starting to rain, and I think it's supposed to do that pretty much all day. So, I need to get home, go over the plants I got with everybody, and there's a few things I want to talk about in the backyard. Just, like, spinning some ideas off, but that really all depends. All depends on whether or not it's raining when I get home. Probably will be, so we have to figure that one out. Be right back. I don't need to say that. Just, you know what's happening. Okay, I'm home. I know it doesn't look any different. It is starting to rain, and I realized y'all, you guys saw everything I got as I was getting it, except for this guy. This is a Bellissima Mixed English Daisy. Isn't she cute? I have a little, like, uh, watering can thing I'm going to plant that up in. And then you guys saw the hostas. I have a cool season plant, not a cool, a shade, a shady planter I want to do. And I wanted to line the edges with a hosta that has a nice white edge to it. And I didn't want to spend much money on it. So 398 is perfect. It, wait, did I get six of them and then this one? Or did I get five and then that could be a problem? Oh, look at that. I was thinking. Okay, so I got seven of those. I'm going to have two planters, so I'll have three in each. And then I got this one, as you saw, just because, I mean, it's so cool. And then that Snapdragon over here, this is actually from Home Depot. I still have these in the back of my car because we're supposed to be down to 29 tomorrow night, 32 the next night. And then it looks like we'll be in the clear, hopefully, after that. And I just figured, like, the, hey, they're at least protected from the frost in here. Which is why I decided to not, like, do, like, a haul haul. Because you already saw what I got. You were with me when I picked them out. And um, I don't really have a place to put these in the grow space. It's very full. And I mean, like, overflowing at this point. These macho ferns. I'll do a fern Friday with these guys. I absolutely love macho ferns. They're such nice, cool ferns. They get really big. They have that really bold tropical appearance to them. They just make me so happy. I could probably take the Snapdragon out. They can take some cold. I have some other plants that can take some cold. Want to see them? Yes, no. Nobody cares. So these are the Dusty Millers, some Pansies. This, I really like this variety. It's just the Matrix Morpheus, which is really close to, like, the OG Pansies, the purple and yellow. I haven't been able... Do you guys remember, like, what these looked like, like, 15, 20 years ago? They had a lot of purple on them, and then, like, that hint of yellow with a little purple dot in the middle. Maybe I'm just misremembering things. I'm not sure, but that's how I remember pansies looking when I was a kid, and I haven't been able to find them like that, so that's probably all just in my head. And then a nice hellebore here. I really like the flowers on this one. There's some variation with them, like, as they age. You can see that one to the left has a different color to it. This one has a little bit more of a pinky cream color to it. And that is the Wincliffe Double Pink. 
had a bore. Oh, and this is all, I didn't follow up with it, did I? I was like, here's a clip of the nursery I went to with the evergreens and then never, I'm so sorry. It's been a chaotic day. I did end up getting one of those sapphire nymphs. Isn't it pretty? I'm going to be doing like a bonsai sort of thing with this, and which will be very easy because it already has the shape to it. Then some labilia down there. They're good with some chilled weather. Chilled weather, cool weather. Got a nice juniper here that I'll also be doing something fun with in a bonsai type of planter. And some golden variegated sweet flag. This stuff makes a nice filler. It's nice to put in the middle of arrangements. Has a good color, draws in the eye. It kind of fountains out a little bit. Looks nice. And then I grab some lamium, which is very, very reflective. There we go. The variety is called White Nancy. These guys can take a little bit more cool weather, and they're just fun and pretty. They crawl across the ground, they add some interest. I like these, obviously, because I bought them. So that's what I got at the beginning of the vlog from the nursery, and never followed up on that. Sorry about that. I guess I could just edit it and fake it through, but I don't... You think you guys know me well enough. This, this, none of this is surprising. I don't need to fake it. Talk about those in another video. I've got my recurve folias moved out, and they are doing well. They're not fully hardy here. You can see they're responding a little bit to the cooler temperatures, but the center's holding up nice and firm, and that's what I want, so they're good. And I also, I think, I have several more of these on the way. Maybe up to ten of them. Let's talk about that when that, when that like, happens. Oh, you guys, I can't talk. Look what's going on here. This, I think this is probably a crenum lily, more than likely, because that's what I had planted here. I'm surprised that's coming up already. Those don't usually make an appearance until like, oh, I don't know, late May around here when the ground starts to get really nice and toasty. Maybe mid-May. This is a pretty warm spot though. There's a wall right there and the sun reflects off it and things warm up an awful lot. So it's been a good spot. I have the crinums in here. There are some Hedicheums, uh coronorium, just like the white butterfly ginger. I am, <laughs> I keep pulling the mulch on top of this over the last few days because like, we're still having some kind of frosty weather. So I want to keep that protected, but it just, just keeps on popping through. And then I did go ahead and just kind of temporarily plop my mule palms into these planters. And I, <laughs> obviously I need to dig this one out some more. But I, I'm going to be repotting these, so I'm not really concerned about that. I just wanted them upright where the wind can't blow them over because it's spring, it's very windy. Are the birds too loud? Is that possible? I can't, I can't tell them to be quiet. So hopefully that's just coming across as nice, peaceful nature sounds, right? I need to Maria Kondo my pots. I have too many. I have an excess. I've been like kind of pulling them into sections and going through them and cleaning them out. And I need to figure something out. That's big pots. Like I'm still been buying some small little planters, but not the big ones. But anyways, mule palms. Nice and hardy. Even though we're going to have some dips into the upper 20s and 30s, I'm not worried about them at all. They'll be okay. Same thing with the windmill palms. But the nice thing with the mule palms is they look so much more tropical than a windmill palm. Look at the fronds on them. They have a very coconutty appearance to them. The Cocos nucifera, a coconut palm. Like probably as close as you can get to something looking like a coconut palm that's also very cold tolerant. That kind of shows through the trunks also with that sort of huskiness. And this is a cross with the Pindu palm and the Queen palm. I talked about these in the last vlog. I just can't stop talking about them because they're so pretty. Everything about these I just love. That's DE powder. It's not bugs. It's a little DE powder. They're just, they're so cool. I love my windmill pumps too, but something about them, it's just not the same. Not as tropical. Much more cold tolerance though. And the fronds are really pretty. Got a lot to do out here. Tons of planting to be done. I'm going to be going a little bit heavier on perennials this year than on annuals. And that's because in years past, the past two years, there's been like a big event at my house. There's been, last year there was a wedding, not at the house, but there was a lot of family coming in town. And then the year before that, there was a big engagement party. So I wanted to use that time that I had to fill in with annuals because they give you a really quick result that things just look beautiful very fast. But I don't have to do that this year, and I want to get more perennials in. I think I talked a little bit before about how I want to get more evergreens out here just because some more winter interest. I, I see something. Let's see if I can get back here. Look at that. Is that going to show up? Cannas are coming up. That's weird. Like I said, though, it is kind of warm back here. Okay, it's raining. I have been concerned because we got down to 13 degrees below zero twice this year, which does not happen often. I have a huge clump of gingers over here with a lot of mulch on, so hopefully they did okay. They're the Hedicheum. Hedicheum, what are they? Either Fiesta or, no, Flaming Torch. Really pretty. 
And they've come back for several years so far, but like I can't ever say for sure when it's gotten that cold. But after seeing this crinamoly coming up over here and then the canna over there, I think those are good signs. And I'm thinking, this is not the best lighting, <laughs> but I gotta go with it guys, I'm sorry. I'm thinking, I'm actually gonna get to see the magnolia bloom this year. The last couple of years it has budded out and then we've had horrible, horrible, unusual colds that just killed off all the buds, but it's already, look at that, I mean, the lighting's bad, but there's nothing I can do about that right now. It's going to be full of great big pink flowers. I'll be sure to get pictures of that and it'll be in videos. I don't think that brief 29 and 32 degree snap is going to hurt them. It'll hurt the flowers that have opened, but it shouldn't hurt the buds depending on how far along they are. I've got raindrops on my lens. Oh, and then last thing, the Pedicits japonicus. Those are all coming up and looking really cool. I planted several of those years ago. I kind of scattered them throughout this berm because these in a shady spot, they'll fill in very heavily with really big, pretty leaves, which they haven't done yet. It's been a few years though. So I'm thinking this year, I mean, they've spread a lot. I didn't even plant any over here. And there's two different varieties. One's just a variegated variety, uh, the Pedicits japonicus, and then the other one, oh, my dog's pooped right on the footpath. And the other one that I think is planted over here is like Gigantia, something like that. It's just supposed to be very large bigger leaves but yeah anyway so if you plant the pedicits japonicus what they do first is they send up these really cool little spring okay airplane as i was saying they put up these fun little flowers those come up first and then the foliage comes up from underneath them and around them and from everywhere they've kind of spread out they're really fun plants i like them a lot though if you have like a really loose well draining rich organic soil i can see them being a little bit like invasive like they could probably really take over an area very quickly you know my paniculatas these are the strawberry vanillas they're starting to bud out which these are some of my favorites uh i also i need to prune these like now and by now i mean like tomorrow or sunday i don't really feel like doing it right now they've gotten very <laughs> you can't see this yeah they're big their canopy's too big they're gonna end up like wilting down when uh if i, I don't give them a good prune so i need to do that i also need to cut this honeysuckle back got a lot of pruning to do out here this berm has been problematic for me for a few years, and I have always planted it up full of bananas, and they've gotten huge and just gorgeous. End up having just a big wall of bananas. But these trees, I've talked about this before, so I'll brief over it very quickly. The sun just changed. The bananas don't grow much over here anymore. So I want to get this filled in with something perennial and hardy and evergreen. Ideally, I would like to plant this up with bamboo, but... One, large clumps of bamboo are expensive, and then I would need to put down a barrier around this entire thing. It's, it's, I just don't feel like doing that much work. I mean, it would look pretty in the long run, but uh, I just, I don't, I don't know. It seems like a lot of work. Might not be that bad. I'm going to think about that a little bit. The other issue, though, with doing a bamboo here is that it's a very exposed area. Wind blows through here like crazy during the wintertime. It's going to end up burning out the foliage, and it's not going to look like a really pretty clump of bamboo. So, uh, I don't know if I'm going to go that route. Another option, I've been thinking about maybe a type of vibranum, something that gets nice and big. They're semi-evergreen, the variety I'm thinking of, which I can't think of off the top of my head. They get fairly big fairly quickly, pretty low maintenance, low fuss. They can go with some sun, they can go with some shade, and they mostly hold on to their foliage during the wintertime. Like, it can get a little bit wilty and weepy, but I think that it would look okay. The reason I think that that would look okay, part of my bench, I still have it because of sentimental reasons. I need to get rid of it, I know. But uh, this, my neighbors have one of these viburnums. It's very pretty, and it gets about the same kind of light that they would be getting, the ones I would be planting. So, like, that might be a good option. And then, I mean, obviously in the front of this, I'll still be filling with all kinds of tropical plants that I shouldn't be growing here. Fill in the entire front with caladiums and impatience. Oh, that'd be really pretty. All right, now I'm just thinking out loud. Isn't that fun, though? Don't you guys like coming out to your garden? And just, it's very relaxing doing that for me. Just looking at it and going, what are all the possibilities? Oh, there's a lot of cleaning to be done out here. All right, I don't know if you've noticed, I'm kind of losing my voice. I've been talking a lot the last few days. So I'm going to wrap things up, and this is long enough anyways. I hope everybody's doing well. That life is just fantastic. Everything's going beautif <laughs> beautifully. That everything's going beautifully for you. On my social media is linked down below. I use Instagram far more than anything else, and I'll be posting pictures and updates and little stories and stuff like that with these. And that magnolia. That magnolia. Okay, you can see it a little bit better here, right? You can see the pink, the hint of pink. Yeah, I'll be sure, like, if it goes into its full bloom, which I think... It will, hopefully, 
it's already doing something. I'll, I'll keep everybody posted. I mean, not that anybody cares. I care. I want, I want it. I wanted the memory because the last few years just had me get the flowers out of it. Benny, you been growing these macho ferns? Especially those of you down south. Are they like crazy invasive for you? Or are they just taking over people's properties? Let me know. I love hearing about stuff like that. The variances, the differences between zones. Our house plants being y'all's weeds. I think that's really cool. I guess not for the environment, but y'all know what I mean. And don't forget to hit that like button. Makes a big difference for the channel and the videos. I feel cringy asking for it, but I do appreciate it, so thank you. And don't forget to subscribe. Upload multiple times a week. Hit that notification bell. That way you know when all the new videos come out. I'm just... I am crazy about this hosta. So it's either a mutant of the Francie, or it's just mislabeled, or it's just interesting variegation. That can happen sometimes. Doesn't mean it's going to last, but whatever it is, I'm liking it. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Things were a little bit last minute, but that's all right. And also, just so you know, I didn't do this for the vlog. I was going to be going and doing this today anyways. Well, buying the neem oil, but I would have gotten all these plants regardless. But I'm glad that I vlogged, actually. I think that that worked out well, that I lost the vlog for the week because I got to do this. And it was just like, I was just cleaning up pots. I was cutting things out of pots and throwing things away and like cutting up root balls wasn't exciting at all. Thanks for hanging. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bam.